Shalom, everybody. I'd like to do another installment on love. This one is called Jesus' Warning on Presuming God's Love. This will be part eight. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Luke 14 to 15. The parable of the great feast in Luke 14 is all about the danger of presuming on God's love. Jesus is at a Sabbath feast, having been invited by one of the Pharisees. As he observes the other guests taking their seating as close to the host of the feast as possible, he warned them about presuming upon their own status. In Jewish culture in the first century, seating arrangements at a feast were all accorded by status. The highest guests would be seated closest to the host, who was called the master of the feast. I quote Jesus again. He put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief seats, saying unto them, When you are bidden of any man to a wedding, don't sit in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thee be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and you begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when you are bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee comes, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whoever exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Luke fourteen seven through 11 Jesus warns them and us not to presume on being in favor or worthy of exaltation, Rather, it would be better to assume your own lowliness and to take the lowest seat and wait to see if the master of the feast deems to call you up higher than to be called to take a lower seat. Nor should we allow our religion to be a mere mutual honor society among our peers. Anyone can give and receive favor, honor, and compliment among his peers. Jesus told us that sinners love those who love them. There's nothing special about that. Let your faith lead you to the lowest and to those least esteemed. Seek to elevate them, especially those who can't pay you back, for then your reward will be revealed at the great messianic feast, which comes at the time of the resurrection of the just. He says, when you make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. Then you'll be blessed, for they can't recompense thee, for you will be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Luke fourteen thirteen to 14 It was that when he mentioned the resurrection of the just and its association with the great messianic feast that caused one of the guests to blurt out in joy and exaltation, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now obviously the guests all knew what Jesus was referring to, for the resurrection of the just and the messianic ban banquet that would follow were major tenets of the religion that they all shared, including Jesus. The man who blurted out that blessing was speaking for all of those present. They all knew of it, and they all expected to be there. Furthermore, they all expected each other to be there as well, for the guests present at that banquet in their minds would consist entirely of people just like them. They would all be Orthodox Jews sharing the same identity and the same religion. Now, all who were present at that Sabbath meal were familiar with descriptions from Scripture of the joys of that banquet and that day, which Jesus was referring to, of which they were sure they would have a part in. Let me quote Isaiah. In this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all of the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. Isaiah 25, 6-8. As far as they were concerned, they and everybody like them would be there, and that was for sure. 
This is the setting for the parable, which is a great warning against the sin of presumption and the dangers of presuming on the grace and love of God. Then he said unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Luke 14, 16-17. A great man was going to throw a feast. He wanted to invite all of his closest friends. He sent out the invitations and received back the RSVPs. Everyone, virtually everyone said, I'll be there. Count me in. I'm planning on it, and etc. All were sure that they were going to the great feast. But between the invite and the RSVPs, which would be the first part, and then the time of the actual feast, there was a delay. And they all with consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground, and I must go needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excuse. Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excuse. And another said, I married a wife, therefore I can't come. Luke 14, 17 through 19. For all of those close friends who had received the invitations and were sure that they would be there, the time of the feast came at an inconvenient moment. Things had come up, so they offered lame excuses. None of the excuses actually hold up. So the great man is incensed and near humiliated. What to do about the feast? So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. Bring in here the poor and the maimed and the, the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it's done as you commanded, and yet there's room. And the Lord said to his servant, Go out into the highways and hedges. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Luke 14, 21 to 23. Well, the master's going to have his feast, no matter who comes. The least likely people will be invited. People who have never been invited to anything rich, nice, clean, or extravagant before. Let them come to the feast and enjoy. So the least heard the invitation, and they couldn't believe their ears. What? You want me to come to the feast? Are you sure? I don't doubt that those originally invited were sincere when originally they said, well, I'll be there. And they probably had some intention of being there. They were close to the host. They'd seen feasts before. Hey, this is just another feast. They knew the salad fork from the steak fork. They could identify the wine selection. It's all very familiar to them. Sure, the initially invited friends of the host wanted to come. And they even expected to come to the feast. But it's not as much as the second batch of invitees. The nothings simply couldn't believe their own good fortune. The grace of the invite was truly amazing to them. They'd never had food like that, nor had they ever been treated so well. And the music sounded like heaven itself. Now, what's the moral of this story? Well, there are many who are thoroughly familiar with Christ. They have been taught about the rapture. They've been taught about the resurrection. They've been taught about the cross. They know the meaning of the bread and the wine, for they've been to countless church services. They've been to many, many lesser feasts, church services, and the final feast is where they fully expect to arrive someday. They love to be there, and they plan on getting there some, somehow. Of course they want to go to heaven. But in the final analysis, how badly do they want to go to heaven? See, because there's a big delay between the RSVP and the actual feast. And like in the parable, things have come up. How badly? You're going to be there? How badly? Would you lose friends over it? Would you be willing to admit you're wrong over it? Would you be willing to be ostracized by this world for the sake of it? Or is it just another feast, something you can take or leave? Do they just presume they'll get there? I've interviewed countless people. Are you going to heaven? Yes. Are you going to heaven when you die? Yes. Are you going to heaven when you die? Yes. I've heard it over and over. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. But then when you ask, how, how do you know? Or, or uh, why should a holy God let you into his heaven? There's a lot of presumption. I had one person say, well, I, I think God should let me into heaven because I'm a good person. 
another person said, I think God should let me into heaven because I've reformed my life. You know, you get all these answers, but there's only one answer that I ever got that I really think is true and satisfactory according to the Bible. Someone said to me, I don't think God should let me into heaven. I'm a sinner. The only reason he can let me into his holy heaven is because Jesus Christ actually died for my sins. And I cannot believe how great and amazing grace is. Now, the poor and the blind and the lame and the halt, these correspond to that kind of attitude. They can't believe their good fortune being invited to the feast. The feast, after all, is the ground of all true joy and happiness. To them, it's not just another feast that they vaguely hope they'll arrive for. Arrive for. It's the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's the ground of all true happiness and joy. It is the aspiration, uh, the goal, the, the beatific vision of seeing Christ. I mean, the, I want to be in that number when the saints come marching in, as the old spiritual says. The book of Revelation virtually ends with this kind of a message. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. You want to be there? I want you to be there. I hope you want to be there with all of your heart. God bless you.